Well, with the energy crisis ongoing, we're looking around the world for new sources of gas. And um, there is a, an area of the world where a significant volume of, of gas has been found. In fact, 150 TCF of gas. So today's video is titled Crisis. What crisis? We're going to look at East Africa and the over 150 trillion cubic feet of gas that has been found offshore in the Ravuma Basin and is about to start being produced. So to set the scene, here is a map of Southern Africa and we can see Tanzania and Mozambique and the Ravuma Basin is highlighted. A reminder, this is, uh, recording was made just a few weeks ahead of the Cape Town Africa Oil Week, which uh, I'll be attending, and I hope to stop by and see some of you at that. So today, it's the story of uh, Tanzania and Mozambique. Starting with Mozambique, and let's look at the exploration history of it. Well, there are two basins. There's the Ravuma Basin we're going to spend most of our time looking at today, and there's the Mozambique Coastal Basin. And it's in the Mozambique Coastal Basin where exploration really uh, had its first success at uh, Panda, Buzi, and at uh, Tamain. Eventually, this, uh, this gas was piped down to, uh, down to southern Africa. Uh, here's a picture of the, uh, the pipeline. But then um, the sort of attention turned up to the Ravuma base, and it was uh, went with resources back in 1982 with the discovery in, in coastal Tanzania at Manazi Bay that really got interest, changed and moved to, uh, to this northern basin. Esso had some uh, success back in 1986, but it was really in 2009, Anadarko's Windjammer Well, which was drilled in Area 1 in the uh, deep water basin of the Ravuma, that really Really started things off. Area 1 is to the west, Area 4 is this easterly block highlighted here. Uh, area 1 was uh, awarded to Anadarko back in uh, 2006. E&I, well Area 4, they started to make their gas discoveries only as recently as 2011. It's in deep water, about a 1,500 metre water depth. To date, we think there's in excess of 170 TCF of gas initially in place in some of these structures, and probably of the order of 100 TCF of gas reserves. If we turn our attention now to Tanzania, a simpler story. The first discovery in Tanzania was on Songo Songo Island, and that was back in 1974, with first gas in 2004. But uh, as mentioned previously, it was at uh, Manazi Bay that the attention really started turning to the, the, the Ravuma Basin and and uh, first gas from Manazi Bay was back in 2006. Deep water discoveries in Tanzania were from 2010 onwards, and to date, numbers of 57 TCF of gas are quoted. So this is a, a look, a map looking at the area. Once Jim Windjammer was found, uh, then on came discoveries at Orca, Mamba, Coral, Aguea, Jadari, um, and so on. There's a map in uh, a little bit more detail showing the Area 1 and, and Area 4. The plans for the floating LNG here at, uh, the, at Coral Sud, which we'll have a look at in a minute. And there are plans to build a, an onshore LNG plant called Mozambique LNG, which we'll talk a little bit about shortly. So looking at the stratigraphy of the basin, well, it is a uh, Mesozoic and tertiary basin, uh, but you can see that a lot of the Ravuma Delta complex here is confined to the Oligocene and younger sediments and in fact much of the uh, m much of the finds to date have been in this uh, uh, Miocene Oligocene and in some places Paleocene section. If we have a look um, well, we can find different lines. The The upper line here, which is uh, sort of running from west to east in Tanzania, and we can see some of the plays that have encountered gas offshore here. It is a rift base, and the rifting was from Permian right through to, to early Jurassic, and then a drift phase, which is primarily from uh, Cretaceous through to Tertiary. But if we look in parts of Mozambique, and we'll have a look at this on seismic in a minute, uh, we can see these gravity slides here, this decolmal, uh, and then you can see these major toe thrusts here. These are the sort of structures, some of these in the deep water section, and this is the sort of location of the Windjammer well here. This is the big graben that's out there, and this is the uh, the Davy Fracture Zone. And over to the east of here, we head on over towards uh, Madagascar. 
In some parts, when you look at the seismic, you can see it's very layer cake. Um, there's major rift here, the Carimbus um, Graben, and there's the Davy Ridge coming on through here. So this is a, an expression of one of the oceanic fracture zones uh, coming on through. So in this Graben, it all looks kind of quite benign. Look in other areas, and this one here, going uh, a line going through uh, Windjammer, Orca, and Barkentine, uh, and indeed Mamba, and we can actually see lots and lots of thrusts here. Now, I'm no geophysicist, but I wonder if, um, uh, you know, you have to do a completely different processing to just understand and, and to get some imaging of these very, very steeply dipping beds. I wonder if, um, you know, there was actually quite a lot of gas associated with these and potentially some very long gas columns. But for now, uh, there's enough gas being, being found. And uh, do we need to do much more exploration until we've actually got some of this gas to market? So you can see here's the location of the major, the, the, the Mamba field. You can see that we get gas down here in these uh, Paleocene fans, but it's uh, here in the uh, the Oligocene where we get a lot of plays. It's uh, an amplitude-led play. There's Windjammer here where we saw, again, gas in these uh, Oligocene sands. If we have a look at uh, Area 4 in a little bit more detail, and you can see a lot of these fields are overlapping. Um, and we'll see a, a section in a minute to try and understand that what this overlap is and what it means. Here's the uh, the partnership in Area 4. So there's a, an arrangement that has been arrived at, which is actually uh, looking at a 50-50 unitization between Area 4 and Area 1. And, and that's for the first 24 TCF of gas. Thereafter, I presume, it's, uh, it, it's based on law of capture. But uh, up until that point, uh, it's going to be shared 50-50. It seems like a novel solution. Solution, but uh, I'm sure it'll work. ExxonMobil uh, acquired 25% of Area 4 from ENI for $2.8 billion back in 2017. Coral, this is the, the big field. The um, FID um, or Project Sanction was back in 2017. And initially, there's going to be six wells drilled targeting um, 15 TCF gas in place. The floating LNG vessel is expected to deliver 3.4 million tonnes of LNG per year. And there's potential that uh, there could be a second floating vessel out on coral. For Mamba, well, it's likely that Mamba will actually be piped to the shore and there there would be two LNG trains but we'll come back and talk about the onshore terminal in a minute. So this uh, section here explains why we get so many overlapping overlapping accumulations and the reason is you can see all these sands here at different horizons so we've got them in the uh, in the Paleocene in the uh, Basal Eocene Mid Eocene and up into the uh, up into the Oligocene here so this would be the uh, the Mamba system here but coral would be in uh, in this location so hence the uh, the overlap we see on the maps a great section here looking to see some internal structuration within here we're seeing you know channel complexes um, interpreted to have these sandy channel lobe complexes with shales and some mud prone mass transport deposits and slumps so this is the sort of the internal geometry of the system here. If we take a look at uh, the Windjammer Discovery in a little bit more detail, this was the play opener for offshore Mozambique for the deep water. In this slide here, we can see a, a map, a structure, and it's these, uh, these thrusts that are, are forming the, uh, the structuration. A Windjammer in here encounters these, uh, these higher amplitudes. And you can see it's not as complex as, as the system over to the west, but um, these more gentle thrust features are where we get the, the larger accumulations. As well as the uh, pipeline we've talked about that goes from the uh, coastal Mozambique basin, there is talk of a of the African Renaissance Pipeline project. Now, that's a pipeline basically taking gas uh, from the proposed Mozambique LNG terminal all the way down into Maputo province. And it was uh, expected to commence in 2023 and phase one to complete by 2025 with uh, a follow-up phase and finally uh, construction so they'd all be ready and in place by 2026. Looking at that Mozambique onshore LNG plant in a little bit more detail, here it is located. Here's the offshore fields here that Anadarko discovered you know, starting back in 2011. 2017, there was an FID approval for this plant. In 2019, Total Energies actually purchased Area 1. So now Total Energy are the operator. In 2020, there was the El Shabab 
insurgency and uh, force majeure was invoked. So essentially, everything is on hold at this LNG plant until the situation is more stable in country, which is really quite sad. And hopefully that resolves itself so that everybody can prosper once the gas starts flowing. The capacity of this plant anticipated to be uh, something in the region of 13 million tonnes of LNG per year, and uh, that's uh, Total Energies as operator. So global supplier, well, Mozambique should be one of the top five LNG producers in the 2030s. And, you know, lots of markets in Southeast Asia and China and all countries really in this region, but essentially um, quite close to the equator, so not the same uh, local demand uh, that there might be in, in higher latitudes, but huge growth potential. So uh, an Indian Ocean exporter to Asia, which is the, the world's largest LNG market. So here is the vessel, the Coral Sur. It's nearly ready to go. First LNG cargo is expected in the third quarter 2022. Here's a look at uh, Trove East Africa. We have every field and discovery for all of those countries. The data's collated. It's GIS compatible. So the key takeaways from today's video, well, Ravuma Basin is set to become a major global LNG provider. Mozambique's first LNG cargo is expected before year-end 2022. Tanzania shouldn't be too far behind, hopefully. Regional stability is needed to enable the LNG project sanction. Do these countries need much exploration when there's so much gas already proven to get to market? So there you have it, Tanzania and Mozambique, two countries that are going to be significant players in the LNG market in years to come. So we, uh, we'll be watching this space. If you want to find out any more, stop me at Africa Oil Week in Cape Town, early October 2022. I look forward to seeing you back on the channel. Stay safe. Bye for now. A quick shout out to Max Richards at OPC. Great to meet you at the Bayes Conference in London at the start of August, Max, and look forward to seeing you back on our channel before too long. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up. Ring that bell. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.